This is the book of Psalms, chapter 41 and verse 11. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. Call Haloyim Ba'abanawa Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachaha Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I learned this 100% truth, and who rule very well and oversee the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Akhazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And finally, a quick shout out to you, Akyam and Akwath, who are sincerely and diligently uh, working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. All right, see y'all, say Shalom. That's Hebrew for peace. All right, this is the Ach Alayah, the brother Elijah. And I'm here with a quick exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai in these last days for the edification of the elect. All right, let me see. I had to do this before I started. <laughs> uh, but as you can see by the title, favor ain't fair, you know? And um, I've had that title in my mind for for a little over a, a week now i'll say about two weeks and i was waiting for the right moment uh to be able to give a particular testimony i'm still within the process of being able to give that testimony because i do believe the lord you know it, it is gonna shoot favor in regards to that situation all right so luck you Wait one second. But uh, instead of, of waiting for the results of that, you know, to be able to give a testimony, I want to go ahead and, and go ahead and make this exhortation and still hope and trust that the Lord, you know, would, would deal with me according to my hope, according to, you know, uh, his word that I trust in, you know. And uh, without too much else to say, let's read the scripture one more time because favor ain't fair. And uh, we're going to get the etymology of that word and go into it. But I want to read the scripture again. So let me get right. Psalm chapter 41 and verse 11, it says, By this I know that thou favorest me. All right, this is King David saying this. You know, he didn't just say, I know you favor everybody, because that would negate what the word favor even means. But he says, By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. Right? Now, real quick, let's get this word. Uh, favorist in the blue letter All right and um, I'll throw it up on the screen after post-production or post-production um, it says uh, that Hebrew word is hapataza and it means to delight in take pleasure in to desire uh, or be pleased with right of men right it says uh, be pleased to do of God right and when you get the strongest definition, it, it goes into uh, figurati figuratively to be pleased with, to desire. Uh, it says to delight, to favor, uh, to be well pleased, or to have pleasure with. Right. So we understand we get the we get the the stigma that's going into it. Like I said, it's the word favor, right? Which you get the word uh, favor from the word favorite. You know that's where you get the word favorite from. A favorite to have a favorite something you don't feel that particular way about every other thing once again that would negate and contradict what the word favorite means it's, it means to have a, a special liking you know or a special approval for uh, in contrast to all the others right so this is the word favor again uh, the etymology it says attractiveness beauty charm it says uh, approval, praise, applause, partiality, good will, inclination. It says support, to show kindness to, to honor, revere. Right. It says meaning, good will, kind regard. Right. To have a good will towards someone or something. Right. It says an act of kindness, a kindness done. Right. It's a kind thing for the heavenly Father. Uh, to withhold us from the hands of our enemies from and, and you know to deliver us from the wicked agenda and the plans of our adversaries our enemies man uh, down here for favor uh, as a verb it says to regard with favor to indulge to treat with partiality 
it says a favor or partiality once again it says meaning to resemble to look somewhat like you know and, and, and that's it on that but you guys once again you guys get the judge you guys get you know where i'm going with this and the reason i choose to even deal with the term favor now is because you know for one overall for those of y'all who have been following the hebrew israelites or who have you know um been aware of the israelites existence even in you know worldly terms like christianity you know or the mainstream you understand that the israelites uh have a particular uh liking from the heavenly father you know he created them to not only be different but to to exalt them on such a high level because of how much he loves them and in contrast and in comparison to all the other nations that he made they are different they are set apart right or at least that's why he made them we know that we're in the process now of the lord redeeming the israelites to to be able to put them on that pedestal but and reading this in psalms let's go back real quick psalms 140 uh psalms 41 uh at verse 11 says by this i know that thou favorest me because mine enemy doth not triumph over me right speaking on myself in particularly uh like i said there was there is something that i'm looking towards for the lord to continue to show favor upon me because this is something i've noticed throughout my entire life even by being blessed to receive the knowledge of this truth you know uh that i have been shown favor from the lord you know he didn't have to uh, single me out you know uh out of the entire nation of israel right the israelites being you so-called blacks hispanics native american indians he didn't have to single me out and pour upon me his holy spirit that rakakwadash the spirit of understanding and to understand this truth and to call upon his name in regards to salvation from the hand of my enemy he didn't have to yet he did right showing that the lord shows favor amongst particular souls even amongst his chosen favorite holy people you know which king david himself being a primary chief example of that and you have various other you know um great men in the scriptures you know uh abraham isaac jacob you know just to throw some other names out there and be specific you know the lord has shown a favor towards them a particular liking and and even mercy in, in, in regards to certain trials and, and situations that, that they're, um, you know, approached with or hindered by, you know, really having their faith tested to see, you know, how much they actually love their heavenly power. Yeah, hope I you all shy, you know, and uh, real quick while we're here, let's go ahead and read Psalms 41 and 12 and 13. And actually, before I read that, I want to also throw this two cents out there as well. Um, you know, in regards to the other Akion, the brothers and few sincere sisters that, you know, are believing, you know, you don't don't be surprised or, or be overly curious of, of why, you know, certain things just happen out better for you in your life in comparison to others, you know, because really, you know, although the Lord does love all of his children and these times now, especially he's not dealing with them all the same. We understand that there are particular elected souls in which he has promised to, to deal you know uh bountifully with compared to the rest of the nation now he will he will you know render unto the the entire nation of israel all to our tribes the blessing and the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven however there is a particular first fruit spirit that the heavenly father is dealing with even now while the rest of the israelites are lost in this world and gone and confused <laughs> and being snared broken and taken ultimately so that they can be destroyed the heavenly father is dealing with his elect more mercifully you know he he's he's doing things for them in regards to even a uh, situation that they may deem as big you know let's say they may not be able to pay their rent for a particular month and then out of nowhere boom a stranger a random stranger that they never met a day in their life comes right along by and says here you look like you might need this I don't want nothing in return. Just, just take it. And then they go on about their day and they may never see that person again. Guess what? There are brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel who have similar testimonies to that very thing. You know, me, myself, uh, and the brother Yashamai, just for a quick example, you know, there's, like I said, there's other brothers that have similar testimonies. But here recently, me and the brother Yashamai uploaded a testimony where we had a Shedamite. And I won't say devil bitch anymore because, hey, she, she done, she done grew honorably amongst us with, with her her generous deeds man no telling who she might have, have been in her past life or what she might have done with us before but she has a particular uh grace towards us to, to where 
as soon as we were in a, a, a time of trouble, hey, the Lord put a spirit on her to, to do for us, not even really knowing us, man, you know? And, and like I said, that being a, a, one example, uh, she's found herself numerous times wanting to do for even myself, not even really knowing me. <laughs> I'm, I, I see myself as a man of Yahweh Bash Shemir Shai, as, as a man of the, the Lord's own heart, you know, truly repenting and desiring to even be of that number of the elect. Uh, prophesied of the downfall of America and the enslavement of her people and yet and still she not even knowing that has a spirit towards me to, to where hey let's say if my damn shoes was untied she would stop me and be like hey hold on let me tie your shoes for you I don't want you to trip up you know the last thing I want for you is to get hurt you know she had that type of a spirit towards me and I don't know the woman <laughs> I've never met the, the woman a day in my life if you ask me but once again, the Lord put the spirit. What does scripture say? When thy ways please the Lord, he maketh even thine enemies to be at peace with thee. You know? And, and once again, that's showing you that the Lord is dealing with particular souls in his last days differently than, than others. You know? This is Psalms 41. And let's read verse 11 again and continue. By this I know that thou favorest me. That. Uh, it says, because my enemy doth not triumph over me, doesn't celebrate our downfall, isn't going to be able to, in the end, rejoice and say, yes, you know, they have been destroyed. You know, my wicked agenda has been fulfilled. You know, we understand that we're in a time of, of judgment and troubles to where, you know, some of us may end up you know, being persecuted, uh, you know, because of, you know, how strong and how stiff we are in regards to this truth. You know, we understand that, you know, some of us may even... Uh, we end up getting locked up and brought before great kings and even being beheaded for this truth. Doesn't mean that the Lord still doesn't have that affinity towards us. Doesn't mean that he's dealing with us any less mercifully or favorably because no, truly we understand that we're still going to receive that inheritance of being the first fruits, being obedient and laying our lives down even unto death, you know? And not all of the nation of Israel can be able to say that, that they stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord and endure for his name's sake. It says in verse 12, And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity and settest me before thy face forever. Right? Not everybody can be able to say such a thing as King David has said, man. Only those who are being risen up through the Holy Spirit in these last days through remembrance and tapping into, you know, the spirit of King David even of, of being truly meek and humble before the Lord. Being of the first fruit, you know, the spiritual house of David being risen up. They're going to be the only ones who can say that they've been uphold, upheld by the Heavenly Father and through His great manifold mercies. It says in verse 13, Blessed be the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the power of Israel for from everlasting and to everlasting, Amon and Amon, which means, and so let it be, right? Because truly, the, the reason we'll be able to inherit such great blessings in the kingdom it's because of the Lord, because of uh, of his perfect and holy will towards us, you know, he, uh, him creating us and wanting to see us in the earth being his representatives, you know, being made in his likeness after the image of his son, the Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, it's only his will that that happens, which is why it will happen. You know, it's not of our own will. And I, I, I really quickly, I did a quick word search uh, in the scriptures for the word of favor, you know. And I want to read some of the scriptures that came up. Uh, let's see. Uh, real quick, this is Psalms chapter 106 and, four, 106 and verse 4 says, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. Because once again, like we understand, the Lord does, out of all 18 nations of people that he made, and I don't want to make this long video because... It gets hot in here. My phone may overheat and cut off. So hopefully I can wrap this up soon. But out of all 18 nations that the Lord made, he chose one particular people as his favorite, as his chosen. And that is the nation of Israel. You know, and like I'm saying, even to be more specific in these times now, he even has a favorite amongst his favorite who, who he's dealing with even more mercifully and more bountifully. You know, and it says, remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people, the Israelites. Oh, visit me with thy salvation. And only the elect, the chosen of the Israelites, will receive that salvation because of their faith and truly because of their election from the from the foundation of the world. They were chosen and set apart from all the rest of the Israelites to, to believe and to have faith 
and to endure for this gospel, you know? Uh, oh, it's not, it's like, yo. Sorry, hold on. Uh, just getting some other scripture really quick. Uh, Job 10 and 12, that has granted me life and favor and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit, right? You got Israelites now who are being consumed by the spirit of wickedness now. You know, they're not being preserved. They're literally being given a, given up to their own heart's desires, their own fleshly lust. You know, you got so-called Black Hispanics and Native American Indians out here uh, taking part in, in this Pride Month, you know, in, in the forwarding of, of this rainbow agenda. And I hate to say rainbow agenda because the rainbow is really a, a, a blessing. You know, they take it and they corrupted that and made it perverseness. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, like I was saying, my phone overheated and ended up overheating and cutting the video off. So I'm just going to pick up where I left off and, you know, we'll wrap it up here pretty soon. It's Proverbs 11 and 17. It even says, he that diligently seeketh good procureth favor. Right. That word procure, procureth goes into building up or receives. You know, it says he that diligently seeketh good procureth favor. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him, right? You're going to ultimately be destroyed in that mis mischievous thought or, or, you know, agenda that you're forwarding, right? But those that truly desire the goodness of the Lord, they're going to receive that favor, you know? Like I said, tapping in that, into that King David spirit, truly being meek, you know, being humble. The scripture said that the meek shall inherit the earth, you know? And why? Because they obtained favor from the Lord and they're going to rule and reign over the world in that righteous spirit. It says, uh, Proverbs 12 and 2, a good man obtaineth favor of the Lord. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. Right? Proverbs 13 and 15, good understanding giveth favor. Right? A good understanding of what? The law, statutes, and commandments. We know that understanding comes from the keeping of the Lord's law, from being obedient unto him and loving his righteous ways. It says, let's get some other ones here. Uh, Uh, let's see. Actually, real quick, let's let's get where the Lord showed favor by choosing the Israelites, right? Uh, how does it go once again? Uh, there we go. Bracket they are, bracket they are, sure. Second Ezra chapter five, and let's start at verse twenty-two. It says, "And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding, right, <laughs> by being good, by seeking the things that are pleasing unto the Lord." It says, "And I began to talk with the Most High again." You know, just really talking about Ezra, you know, fasting and you know, and seeking the Lord, and the Lord showing him visions. And this is what the Lord, you know, through His angel spoke unto him, right? It says in verse twenty-three. And said, O Lord, that bearest rule. Slack, y'all. It says, and said, O Lord, that bearest rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee one only vine. Right? And it says, and of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. And of all the flowers thereof, one lily. So the Lord, I mean, so it's, it's being spoken of by Ezra, acknowledging the Lord's favorite things. Showing you that the Lord... You know, he does operate with favorites, showing favor in the things that he's made. Although he's made everything, he's chosen particular things that he loves above others. You know, as it even says, and of all the lands, uh, as of, of all the lands of the whole world that has chosen the one pit. What pit is that? The land of Israel, right? Jerusalem. And it says, and of all the flowers, there are one lily. The, lo the Lord loves the lily over all the other flowers, not the roses, you know, not the you know, um, daisies and all the other flowers. No, he loves the lily. It says, and of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee one river, right? That's the Jordan River. It says, and of all builded cities, thou hast hallowed Zion unto thyself. Zion is a, a particular name for the kingdom of Israel, right? Zion, I, I believe, means, matter of fact, let's, let's go ahead and get it because I don't want to just be making stuff up. But I believe it, it, it goes into being upright. 
Yeah, let's get it. And, and what made Zion upright? The law, statutes, and commandments. All right, yeah, parts placed. Oh, the city on the hill, you know, roughly paraphrasing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Zion won, right? Which, like I said, means parts placed. Uh, another name for Jerusalem, especially in the prophetic books, right? Because the mountain of Jerusalem, the kingdom of Israel, is going to be established here after the destruction of America, Babylon the Great. You know, the end of uh, the end of Esau is the beginning of Jacob, right? Uh, roughly paraphrasing, but it says in Second Ezra chapter five and verse twenty six, it says, "And of all the fowls that are created, thou hast named thee one dove. Out of all the birds, the eagles, the hawks, the falcons, the owls, the Lord chose the dove, right? And it says, "And of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep. Out of all the different cattle, you know, the cows, you know, look, the Lord loves the sheep." It says, and among all the multitudes of people that has gotten thee one people and unto this people whom thou lovest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. And who was the law given to even by Moses, the Israelites, the children of Israel. So you understand that the Lord does have a chosen people, you know, even reading Deuteronomy 7 and 6, you know, the Lord acknowledges how he separated the Israelites, you know, from all other nations and even gave them that law so that they could be holy before him. All right, now real quick, matter of fact, I'm gonna get this last scripture and we'll go ahead and end it because I really, like I said, I wanted to, wanted to, you know, acknowledge the fact that the Lord does have particular souls and particular men out here that He favors and and you know He He does things for them that you know other Israelites don't receive because of their own wickedness. You know, like I said, the Lord, hey, here recently, even the car that I'm sitting in now, I, I it was a gift, man. You know, it, it's it's been fully paid for in full. And it was given to me. I didn't have to pay a dime for this car, you know. And I had gone, you know, a good season, you know, uh, without a car. You know, and what does the scripture say? Uh, when thou art changed to a lower state, be patient. You know, roughly matter of fact, let's get that real quick. You know, because in that patience, the Lord, you know, he gifted me with this. You know, I, I went without a car. And now I have a car that I didn't even have to pay for. It was a gift. Please ask us to inform whatsoever is brought upon thee. Take cheerfully and be patient when there are chains to a low estate, right? Because we understand it's an easy thing for the Lord to, to, to make a poor man rich. You know, it's an easy thing in the sight of the Lord to do that. And he is going to do it even for these particular elected souls in these last days. You know, even though we're poor on this side, we understand that we're rich in our faith. And it's through that faith that we're going to procure <laughs> and receive a, a, a everlasting kingdom, man. So with that, let's go ahead and get this and we'll end it, man. I brought this out. This has been edifying. It says, uh, how does the scripture go? Here we go. Care for elect. I believe that's how it goes, too. This is it, but I want to get care for the elect. Let me get that one. All right, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. It says, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy, and you can even say his favor, is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. So that care that he has, you know, that favor, that mercy, that grace that he has is laid up for his elect. The chosen souls, not just all the souls, the chosen, that's what the word elect goes into, electos. He's chosen particular individuals that he's going to deal with on, on, on a much merciful level than others, man. And, and, you know, we shouldn't be surprised at that, man. Those of us who are aware of this gospel, we understand why even certain situations that we have to endure and go through, the Lord deals with us in, in such a way where we don't have to care and, and worry or fret because we trust in him to deal with us as we as we uh, can hold him to according to his word the lord you know the lord promised us that you know if, if we are, are obedient unto him and seeking his, his kingdom first all other things will be added unto us man you know and it's through that faith in that that guess what he's he's been able to show his great mercy and his favor towards us man you know but with that Abarats is our Lord willing. This was edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Till next time, Akiyam and Akwath. Shalom.
Shalom.